Hello again! Welcome back! I'm not sure exactly what's causing the bit of a buzz you're getting, at least in the beginning of this. As soon as I figure out how to make that go away, I promise you I will. But in the meantime, welcome back! As usual, this is Becca going by Netcat or Netcat's Meow Win Online. And this is another week discussing Linden scripting language. Uh, the very first thing, though, actually, that I want to say is thank you to the outpouring of support last week. Uh, I had missed a video the week before that because of my computer having issues, and several of you in the comments were very supportive about sticking by this channel with that delay, and I know everybody says that everybody says that they have the best community, and everybody says that everyone else says they have the best, but this community may be small, but y'all are really, really good people. So I, I thank you. It, it's, I, I cannot express enough appreciation for that. Except perhaps by moving on and actually giving you what you're here for. So without further ado, last week as a refresher, we are working on this little doohickey in the process of building a variable text sign. We had set it so we could set any two letters that we wanted there we go touch the wrong object in order to change the lettering so today what we need to do is go ahead and set the method to read the text that you give to it in order to set the specific things that you're after. So, we are going to, for the moment, just to make this easier, give it a specific string text equals, let's go with just a couple of letters here. FF. I happen to like the game's Final Fantasy, so let's go with FF. And then we're going to change this from automatically setting those two letters to reading through the text here and deciding which ones to put in out of the various ones we have. The way we have it right now is each of these assigns a specific spot on one axis for moving the texture around. So what we're going to do is make a slightly more complicated system this time it's because we need to have it automatically with each space of letter not just adjust what letter we're showing but adjust what space in its overall configuration we're going to show. Right now each of these is just a specific variable. So we're going to have to create a series of commands that can take a variable for the letter and a variable for position. Basically for which face, which prim. And we have to make it adaptable. So we're actually going to need to go through whoops, and create a series of commands per letter. So we can say if letter A run command A with these variables for which prim, which face, because when this is done, we're going to have more than one prim and more than two faces to operate with. This is just a temporary situation here. So we'd have A with arguments. One argument would be integer prim. The next argument would be integer face. And all it would be prim face. the, we 
need to have a number attached to it or an additional letter. We can't have a single letter base. Actually, no, we can't have a single letter base. We can't have a single number based thing, so. Let A. That's how we're going to make the command. And because it's a very small, very repetitive command, we could set it up like that. Save. And it is objecting because I did not place that. The power of the semicolons. I am going to go ahead and cut here while I go ahead and create the other letters. those all in place. I have, as you see, a line like this for every one of the letters, numbers, and punctuation marks on my line. Please excuse the constant Discord pops. There's actually something important I need to be able to pay attention to right now. I'm really sorry for leaving that going, but it is kind of important right now. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a thing that will actually compare each letter. So a command called compare string letter and then at the end of it we'll it will basically choose which of these to trigger so we're also going to need integer to prim, integer face. If letter equals A, then keeping these separated because it's easy to it's easier to have code broken up a bit. Let a prim comma face. We're gonna do a whole bunch of these just like so. Be back to you in a minute again. first test we're actually going to do is to make sure that we can, in fact, trigger the letter commands the way we have it set up. So, since letter F and prim and F Let A All right, this will test two of the control options we've got. Yep, those work okay. And pardon me a moment. Okay, welcome back. Sorry for that brief delay that I, if I edit this well, you all won't even notice. Um, but we are back again, and I'm going to start showing how to break down the actual text string you've got. So, we're going to create a uh, reader string text. I equals zero because you have to establish the integer i before we create a for loop. 
a for loop will just run through until a set number of iterations is complete, and we're going to determine that number of iterations by integer length equals, and this is where we consult yawn wiki for something I do not remember off the top of my head. string length. There it is right there. Just string length. And it processes as an integer, which is exactly what we need anyway. String length. Text, because you have to put in what string you're using for i equals zero i is less than length i equals i plus one there are those that will tell you to use i plus plus it means the same thing I just happen to find this to be easier to read. It's clearer, it's easier to work with. Okay. If i equals zero, feed that letter into here, into compare, compare, and we need a letter, an integer that indicates the prim, an integer that indicates the face. We have the prim 2, face 7, so 2, 7. Right now, though, that doesn't actually compare anything. In order to get what to compare, we need another command called substring. So it will get you a string. You start with the string source, which is our text, an integer that says where to start, and an integer that says where to end. So, our source is the text that's being fed in, our start is zero, our end is zero. That will read only one letter. And then else if i equals one. And we're going to use two six. Only now we're comparing one and one. And that syntax error is because I forgot to close the bracket here. We had the open and the closed bracket for the for loop, but we didn't only had the open bracket for reader, so I had to add the bracket here to close the reader command that we created, or the reader global. Now what we're going to do, we're going to turn these off. Reader. String text. Let's actually change that. That way we're not overusing the same variable name because that was a mistake on my part. Name 
not defined. What did I do? Words plural. Save. There we go. Now you change the words to say my first two initials. There we go. It is actually reading the text we gave it and setting the letters accordingly. So next week when you come back, we're going to expand this to more of these so that you'll have more letters. We'll be able to spell out larger words. And then the next step after that will be to read from a note card file or from some other source. So this week we took the basic text faces that we'd set up last week. We set it up to actually be able to read a line of text that is given and convert that into an appropriate set of letters in their correct positions. And next week I will teach you how to expand that to a much larger and more pronounced effect. Again, I can't thank those of you that were commenting on on last week's video enough. I also want to welcome a couple of people that have started commenting recently. I'm really glad to have you around. It's good to see the interest and see the channel growing. Do make sure to check out the Discord server. I will leave a link in the description. It is a good place for the little community that we're growing and sometimes if it's relatively simple I'll answer questions directly in the channel. Uh, occasionally we've actually had somebody else in the in the channel actually know and answer and I expect as this continues that's going to become more and more of a thing and it's also a good place to tell me what kind of tutorials you all want what is of use to you because ultimately this is mostly about you all though occasionally your requests are forcing me to stretch my limits and learn new things which is really awesome I, re I actually appreciate that I, I like the fact that Sometimes I have to up my game for y'all. So anyway, that's it for this week. Videos are up usually by noon on Tuesdays, Eastern Standard Time, barring huge complications. So as usual, good day, good luck, and happy coding. Meow. <laughs>